Okay, I'm going to do a quick video here on the church in transition. All right, um, I'm dispensational. She is too. Um, and any Bible-believing Christian will be dispensational. Dispensation is a Bible word. It appears four times in your King James Bible. And you can clearly see that there are changes that happen. Old Testament to New Testament is obviously the most clear. Um, obviously something happened. And um, the death of the testator brought in a new dispensation. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 17. Uh, there's things that happen there. Now, when Jesus first died on the cross, there were signs given to confirm the word to the Jews. So the early part of the book of Acts, you're seeing signs, speaking in tongues, prophesying, healing, things like that. You're seeing those sign gifts, but it transitioned. Okay, there was a transition that happened there. There was a transition during the time of Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. You know, the law and the prophets are until John, and since that time the kingdom of heaven is preached, and every man presseth into it. You read about that in the New Testament there. Okay, so there's transitions. When you get towards the end of a dispensation or into the beginning of a new one, there will be some transition stuff. Some things start to happen, some overlap of dispensations, in other words. All right, now as we are getting closer to the time of Jacob's trouble, the rapture is what's going to separate the church age from the time of Jacob's trouble. But the climate of the time of Jacob's trouble is starting to now appear. All right. Um, if you drive from Florida to northern Maine in January, you're going to see transition. Okay. You're going to be wearing a short sleeve shirt when you leave Florida, and you're not going to be wearing the short sleeve shirt when you reach northern Maine unless it's under a couple layers of coats. <laughs> You know, it gets cold here. Wool right. coats. Yeah. But you're going to see transition. You might leave or you might stop your trip before you reach northern Maine. But the point is, as you get closer towards that time, you're going to see more snow. It's going to get colder. The temperature is going to change. Well, so it is right now. You'll see that in the Gospels too, by the way. They're struggling with the thing of what we're, I thought we were under the law and, and you know, you're not keeping the Sabbath day, Jesus, and you're this and that and whatever. And Jesus is saying, you know, hey, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath here. You know, I make the rules. I'm God manifest in the flesh. Um, and besides, you're adding all these traditions that are not in the Old Testament, Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes and things. It's a transition time. All right. And brethren, we're in a transition right now. The church age is ending and we are transitioning. I'm going to give you seven things, seven points, if you will, of the transition that's happening and that will happen, that will take, the rapture is going to happen sometime in this transition time period, and then it's going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. And we're already seeing this stuff happening. Okay? Now, what's the first one? Transitioning from the church age to the time of Jacob's trouble. What's the first one? Well, freedom to worship. Right now, people can build buildings and stuff like this and say, oh, I'm worshiping in a church building and stuff like this. I mean, you could say that back in the early 1900s, 1800s, you know, there were people that met in public places and things, and then they started calling them churches, and they brought in the Catholic paganism and stuff like that. Uh, it's always been a problem. It's never been authorized in the King James Bible. But, you know, you could say, well, these people met in a barn out in the field and they called it a meeting house. They didn't technically call it a church and, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And we're not going to get into the whole debate here, the whole argument. But the point is, God has grace there. There's some, there's the times of that ignorance God kind of winked at, you know, like it says in Acts chapter 17, talking about the Old Testament. But I'm saying there was some of that stuff that God just kind of said, okay, you people don't have the... You're not going to be told by your pastor that there's no church buildings in the New Testament because that kind of cuts into his salary, you know. But now people know it. More and more people are finding it out. And these church buildings are such wicked, you know, centers of perversion uh, so many times. I mean, I've, I've experienced it in, in nearly every church building I've ever been in. Uh, she's experienced it. I mean, a lot of you have experienced it. The family that we had people praying for and still pray for them too, by the way. They're still going through some of that. Eight-year-old daughter's twin daughters raped by a Baptist King James Bible believing preacher professing of course but what's going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble are people going to be worshiping in church buildings no any saint in the time of Jacob's trouble is not going to be worshiping publicly not going to happen it can't happen okay it's illegal in that time period you read in Revelation chapter 6 about that they're 
They're, they're killed for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God. All right, so you are not going to be worshiping in buildings in the time of Jacob's trouble. And here's where my point comes in. What are we seeing right now? We're seeing the transition happen. Freedom to worship is all of a sudden starting to get come under fire. And now you have up in Canada, they're saying, if you speak against the transgender perverts, then, you know, we might have to put you in jail for that. You see? Now think about this. If you're part of a church corporation, the body there, if you're part of that, and you say, well, my church isn't 501c3. Okay, but you're still under the collar of law. You are still in a public building that's open to the public. And if you go to court and you try to say, well, we're not 501c3, well, the average juror is going to go, but you're a church. You know, you're a public place, whatever. You're not supposed to do things to influence elections or affect public policy, according to the IRS laws. I've shared that in other videos from the IRS's website. Okay, so if you're in that situation and you're preaching and things like this, you don't really have the freedom to truly speak your mind. See, right now, we're in video ministry. All right? We don't copyright anything we do. We don't trademark or register or anything that we do. It's all just public domain. It's free for you to copy and make copies of. We only ask, please don't change it, because if you do, you're going to answer to the Lord for that. But what we do is the public domain, and we're just two people talking. She does some videos for women. I do videos for men and women. All right? You know, if they come after me, they're, they can only come after our assets that we have, our, our financial assets, which is not very much. You know? <laughs> I mean, there's not a whole lot here for anybody to take. So, you know, they're coming after individuals. Well, that's going to that's gonna be difficult in court. But if you're part of a corporation, see, they can come up and they can get you. So what's happening? And the transition is happening where that freedom to worship and, you know, you people are like, well, we can worship in our public building. Well, that's ending, isn't it? It's ending. And that, why? Because the transition is starting to happen. God is transitioning, saying the public building thing isn't going to work. All right. In the time of Jacob's trouble, the Antichrist, the whole world's going to worship the beast. Where do you worship? You worship in church buildings. And I had a brother contact me recently talking about some of this FEMA stuff that's going on here in America. A lot of the church steeples are actually being used as antennas for FEMA communications. Wireless think about, communications. Yeah, think about it. Think about it. What's the tallest thing in the average town, small town in America? The church steeple. Again, drive through a small town. You'll see it. All right? Perfect place to put an antenna. But we, that's transition number one. And again, you say, well, I'm going to stand right here in my church building and I'm not moving. I won't budge until the rapture happens. Oh, uh, well, the transition is going to happen. And you might be able to pull that off and stay in your church building and have to answer to the Lord for that. But why not get out of that? The transition is going to happen. And, you know, I actually had a brother that was very much, he was a graduate of PBI, uh, knew him years and years ago as an older guy, and uh, and he said he said you know he said I believe that the the church age is going to go in a complete circle, and we're going to end up where we first started out, like in the Book of Acts. I agree 100 percent with that. And this guy was you know he occasionally liked to go to church buildings, you know PBI grad. So uh, you can say what you want about that, but I believe that that's going to happen. That the body of Christ is going to have to go back to worshiping underground in homes okay and i mean underground as far as off the radar okay you don't have to worship in a cave unless you have one okay go to galatians uh galatians chapter 2 i think it is i don't have any scriptures written down for this it's just kind of winging it i wrote this little list down um galatians chapter 2 whip, 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 back this way sorry chapter 3 i thought it was either chapter 2 or chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3, verse uh, 28 and 29. Here's another one of the transitions. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are, ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Okay. Now the Bible never gives ground to uh, miscegenation, interracial marriage. 
Sorry, it doesn't. Uh, and again, you know, I get in trouble for that. Whatever, I don't really care. Um, but the thing of when you look at uh, back in the book of Genesis and all the people are coming together and they're saying we're all one. Um, well, that's what a lot of people say right now. And they'll say, well, you know, in Christ where there's neither Jew nor Gentile, we're all one. Okay, that's true for church age in terms of spiritually speaking. There's no difference. If you're you know, born to Orthodox Jewish parents and you get saved, well, you're not somehow higher up in a position than me as a Gentile, okay, than her as a Gentile. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Turn to Revelation 7. But what's the transition? What is the transition? And this is interesting. Revelation chapter 7. Now you have verses 1 down through uh, verse 8. And those are the 12,000 12, from each of the 12 tribes. And then verse 9. Um, we'll just say verse 9 there. And uh, it's of, it says, A great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. Okay? So... There's distinction in that time period. You see the transition? Right now, there's, no, there's neither junior. And these are, this is talking about saved people, too, by the way. And God splits them into two different groups. And He says, Jews, you go over there. Over here, the Gentile nations. See, another reason why we know that we're not going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Because there's, we're all one in Christ Jesus right now, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're separate. God separates them. And you know what's happening? You say, well, I don't understand. What's the transition here? What are we seeing in our, our modern world? Forced integration. Forcing Arabic Muslims to come into Germany and into the UK and into you know, a lot of the other countries. And they're even trying to get them here into America. I know that they have in some areas. They put them into Australia and, and Canada and things like this. They are forcing the people to integrate. And you know what's going to happen as a result? There's going to be race wars. There already is. There's already people that are separating and saying they're, they're coming all of a sudden. It's no longer, oh, we're all one big happy family. We're all just, if you're in Germany, you're a German. Yay. All of a sudden, people are starting to get really picky about their, I'll use the worldly term, racial distinction. And now they're saying, you don't belong here. This is our land. This is our country. You get out. You're a foreigner here. Isn't that interesting? We're seeing a transition from the church age into the time of Jacob's trouble. Things are starting to happen. And as it goes into that time of Jacob's trouble, there will be huge race wars and you will have people returning to tribes. That's why the, the Lord talks about, then shall all the tribes of the earth, they'll see the Son of Man coming in the you know, clouds and things, and they'll all mourn. Now, I think it's specifically a reference to the 12 tribes, but I think that there's people are going to separate into their own distinct tribes. Very interesting. And of course, you see in the Millennial Kingdom, God actually restores the nations and into eternity as well. So, we're seeing another transition. Ephesians chapter 2. Another one of the church and transition things. Right now, the gospel is faith alone. All right? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. If you don't know it, you should. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of, your, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Keep your finger there and turn to James chapter 2. Okay, so you see it there. Faith alone. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, we saw that. James chapter 2, verse... Uh, verse 14, James 2, 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, come on. Can faith save you? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 said it can. What's going on? Who's the book of James written to? James chapter 1, verse 1, to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. It's written to the Jews. But wait, I thought that there weren't any Jews and Gentiles right now. But there is in the time of Jacob's trouble. You see? See how the thing works out? So, and you can go down through James chapter 2. You know, the Catholics will always do that. They throw that thing around like, you know, like they're a part of the 12 tribes. It's kind of funny. They're so ignorant of Scripture. It's incredible. You know, for the church that supposedly Christ founded, 
they're the most scripturally inept uh, group of people out there. It's kind of funny. A younger brother, I saw a comment that he made to a Catholic, and, and they were like, we gave you the scriptures. And he said, well, if you did that, then why did you keep it from people for over a thousand years? Amen. Very <laughs> profound. I love that. That was great. Um, so... Praise the Lord for you, brother. I really appreciated that one. But you can go down through James chapter 2 and you'll see the thing of faith and works, faith and works, faith and works. Now, why is that? Revelation 14. Go to Revelation 14. You can take your fingers out of the other parts there. <clears throat> Again, if you're familiar with the ministry, you know where I'm going here. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Okay, you ready? Ready to count? Go ahead. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Keep the commandments and the faith. Works and faith. Can faith save him? No. Not in the time of Jacob's trouble, it can't. Why? You're going to have all the faith in the world. If you take the mark of the beast... Verses 9 through 11 says, you go to hell. But I had faith. I believed in Jesus. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Faith and works in that time of Jacob's trouble. That's why Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 says that a man has to endure to the end to be saved. And all these little Baptist perverts are coming out and saying, well, it doesn't mean endure in the sense of your salvation. It just means that you have to endure physically so that you'll physically be saved. Don't listen to people that talk about that stuff. They are lying to you. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this as we continue. There are people that are already preaching a false gospel right now. The easy believism heretics. These Satanists that are coming out and they're saying, I got saved when I was two years old in, in Catholic Sunday school, and I'm a Christian now, and I don't care about sins and things like this and, and whatever else, you know. Uh -huh. And of course, they'll cut that out. You know, and they, these, these little devils, they just they, they watch every little thing that you do, and they just look for all the little words, and they say, oh, he said this, and, oh, you know. Or like a... You they're, know, they're sick, uh, is what they are. A particular sodomite said, see, the word says, should. Yeah. Little yeah. mind game there. So, but you see the thing there. Again, we're transitioning. We are transitioning over. Okay? There are things that are happening here in the future that when we leave, the mark of the beast is, I mean, we could leave today and the mark of the beast could be set up tomorrow. The technology is already here, you know, but, you know, there could be an economic collapse beforehand so that things are more ready. I don't know. Is it going to happen before or after the rapture? We don't know that. Hopefully after. Okay. Eternal security. We're not going to go there, but you can read Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, well, go to Ephesians chapter 1. We'll, we'll read it. Uh, and then chapter 4 as well. But uh, we do have eternal security for today. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse, verse, excuse me, verse uh, 13. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay. God's Holy Spirit seals you by a promise. God's not going to lie to you. All right. That's there. Now, um, go to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Chapter, uh, let's see which one do I want to read here. There I'll have you read, excuse me. Um, You're excused. Read, uh, I guess well, Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 26 and 27. Don't include 25. No, also. no. Okay. All right. For if we sin willfully after that, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Okay. Two points. First of all, the book is written to who? Hebrews. Hebrews. What are Hebrews? They're Jews. Hebrews and James tie together. Okay? That's why you see faith and works there. Question. Have you ever sinned willfully after you've been saved? 
Well, the Apostle Paul did read Romans chapter 7. And certainly you have sinned willfully after you've been saved. Well, then according to that scripture, if that's for us, you've lost your salvation. And you can't get it back. You know, the charismaniac funny bunnies and the no eternal security people, they'll go to these verses and they'll say, see, you can lose your salvation. But every single one of them teaches that you can get it back. And the text plainly says you can't. See, well, what's going on there? Revelation chapter 14. Turn to Revelation 14. Read verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out with, without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, you, you messed up the one part there. You didn't read that. You shouldn't have said whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. It's only whosoever of lost people. Or, or um, some people that, you know, uh, no, actually the word is whosoever. And there in verse 9, it's if any man. So you'll get these people and they'll say, well, you see, um, anybody that would take the mark of the beast, that just proves that they weren't truly saved. That's not what it's saying. It says any man and whosoever in the text. Okay? And in back, if you compare it to the book of Hebrews, it's saying if we sin willfully after that we've received the knowledge of the truth. All right? And if you read, I think it's chapter 6, it talks about too, you know, the same kind of a deal. There. It's talking about people that were saved and they sin willfully and then they're gone. They lose their salvation. They take the mark and therefore they go to hell. Now we don't have to worry about that right now. right? But that time is going to come for the people that don't go up in the rapture. That's going to be there. But again, are we seeing the transition happen? Yes. We're getting very, very close to that cashless society. Extremely close to it. Which takes us to the next point. All right. Right now, there are no signs. Jesus actually rebuked people. They're saying, show us a sign, show us a sign. And he's in that time period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And he's saying, you know, an adulterous and wicked generation seeketh after a sign. You know, and the only sign that he gives is the sign of himself dying on the cross. All right. So right now, it's the just shall live by faith. We're living by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. All right. But in the future, uh, I think there's going to be a few signs in the time of Jacob's trouble. One or two. Yeah, a couple. Maybe. You know, I mean, you get the seven seals, then you get the seven trumpets, then you get the seven vials. And a lot of that overlaps and things. But you talk about signs and wonders. Uh, it's all through the thing. And turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Why are there signs and wonders? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse uh, 22. Read that. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. You didn't read it right. See, the, the, the well, Jews... Read it like this? The, if you're on a faithful word Baptist church, perhaps. But um, the Jews is the church. See? So the church requires a sign, and the Greeks, the church, seek after wisdom. See, it's the same thing. The Jews, the Greeks, and the Jews are the same. See? The Jews are no more. You see? So, in the time that's coming, the time of Jacob's trouble, it's not really Jacob's trouble, it's the church's trouble. Never mind Jeremiah 30, verse 7, or, or, or in Daniel chapter 9, we're talking about my people, Israel. Don't forget about that stuff. That's That's whatever but you know um see it's the church requires a sign so you read that wrong try better next time okay okay <laughs> you know uh 
But I mean, seriously, Do I need brother, to go to a, a university to get a you degree should, in a understanding seminary. how to, how to you go, read a Go to sentence? a Jesuit seminary and then come out and say, I'm not actually a Jesuit. Just because I went to a Jesuit seminary doesn't make me a Jesuit. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> people. But the point is, there's major signs. I don't see how anybody can be an atheist right now. I mean, truly an atheist. There's no such thing really as an atheist. They're God-haters. They're actually Luciferians. Um, atheists are, you know, you read back Satan's lie to Eve in the Garden of Eden. You know, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you know, and... and See, that's what they, it's, it's a desire to make one wise. That's what they think of themselves. Their Satanists is all that they are. They just follow Satan's 6,000 year plan to, to damn men to hell. That's all that they do. It's really kind of sad. But uh, right now, Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. Right now, this is the condition for the gospel. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. How does that line up with uh, yeah, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11 that we read earlier? If any man takes the mark, whosoever takes the mark goes to hell. See? Right now, you can still get saved. No matter what you are, you come to God as a sinner, you can get saved. Time of Jacob's trouble, mm -mm. you take that mark, you're over. It's done. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. It's finished. You're done. See? Now, again, can we see the transition happening? Are there people that are so wicked that they're just like, don't talk to me about that God. It's just like people are becoming so hardened to the gospel. And people are just like so infatuated with this whole biometrics, you know, biohacker thing, they, they call it, and stuff like this. We're seeing the transition happening. Again, as we're getting closer to that time of Jacob's trouble, and we're going to be called out at some point in time, but as we're getting closer, you can feel the temperature change, like I talked about earlier. You can feel things starting to change, starting to get really weird. You know, it's, it's incredible. So, you know, uh, and... I just want to make this point here before I go on to the last and final point. Uh, and that is that this is why this whole easy believism thing is, is hitting the body of Christ so hard right now. They're saying, you know, it's, it's wrong to repent of your sins and stuff like this. I had this little Andersnake zombie and he was like, you're not actually saved, Brian, because you, don't, you haven't put your faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm like, okay. So I said, uh, what must I do to be saved? And he was going all over the place, going back to the Old Testament, going to the Gospels, going all over the place to try and tell me how to be saved. And I went through two of his comments, ridiculous, just all this stuff, and two comments, and he never once quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, where it defines the Gospel that we're supposed to be preaching. And I just rebuked the guy. I was like, you're a false prophet. You are a liar. And, I, you know, I've... I've you know, blocked a number of these Andersnake zombies because they're they're just wicked. But you see, these people are there already set up by the devil. They're going to be part of the great deception there, the strong delusion that God sends. And they're going to come in and they're just going to step right in after we leave and they're going to go, it wasn't the rapture. We're still here. We're saved. That's exactly what they're going to do. And they're going to say, no, no, we're just, it's faith only. Believe. Believe in Jesus. But isn't this the mark of the beast? Well, I don't really know for sure. I don't really think the Bible says one way or another, like Ken Hovind says. Or they'll and they're say and they're going to say terrorist attack. The rapture was a terrorist attack. Yeah, they'll come up with some UFO, something, nonsense. whatever. But the point is, they're going to be preaching this false gospel that they're already preaching right now, of saying it's just belief, just totally belief. And if you have to take a mark or something, well, okay. I mean, God wants you to provide for your family. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 says, If any provide not for his own, especially for they of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. God wouldn't want you to violate that scripture now, would he? You see? You see how this thing is working out? See? We are in that transition time. It's incredible. But finally, number seven. Worldly conformity today. 
As a Christian, you can get extremely worldly. You can go out, you can get yourself into debt, you can get messed up in gluttony, you can get messed up in pornography, you can get messed up in uh, you know, drunkenness, whatever. You can do a lot of dumb things right now as a Christian, and all you're going to do is just wreck your life, wreck your rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. All right, uh, you're not going to lose your salvation. You're just going to mess your life up, okay, really badly. But what about the time of Jacob's trouble? Hmm? In that time period, there ain't going to be no conforming to the world. You will be an enemy of the state. Hunted down right? like an animal. Exactly. But here's the interesting thing. Again, you say, well, okay, well, how's this fit in with the, the whole subject here, the, the transition thing? Because it's starting to get pretty dangerous to conform to the world. We're entering into the transition. You see? We're starting to already see it. You have to have Obamacare. We're going to sue you and possibly put you in jail. Fine you. I shouldn't say sue you. We're going to fine you and put you in jail. Are they going to have health insurance in the time of Jacob's trouble? No. No. Hey, you need to take your pharmaceutical pills. Are they going to be taking them in the time of Jacob's trouble? No. And the pharmaceutical pills are really, really, really poisonous. Okay, extremely poisonous. Christians need to say, no thank you, natural health. Stuff I can pick out there that God made, that God grows out there in nature. Important for us today. Okay? Very important for us today. You're going to have to spend some time studying that stuff. How about debt? Is it right for a Christian to be in debt? No. Are a lot of Christians in debt? Yes, unfortunately. And I'll tell you what, there's a movement here. It's all over the internet and stuff. The tiny home movement. People saying, I'm getting away from mortgages. I don't want to be in debt. Why aren't Christians leading that thing? But yet it's lost people. And you know, a lot of those lost people might end up being Revelation chapter 7 there. The great multitude, which no man could number. I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of lost people come up with some pretty good ideas that Christians should be the ones doing. You know? And again, I mean, we can keep this thing going and going and going and going and going. Right now, conforming to the world, just, just you know, kind of kicking back and just taking it easy and, ah, oh, it's so nice to be a Christian here in the free world and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's starting to get dangerous. Why? It's transitioning, brethren. And when, it, when we leave, the people that get left behind are not going to be able to go along with the system. They will not be able to follow the laws of the land. They're going to have to be totally anti-government because the government's going to be run by Satan manifest in the flesh and the person of the Antichrist. They're not going to be able to buy or sell. They're going to have to have some kind of an underground economy. They're going to have to go out there and try to find food however they can. They're not going to the medical establishment. They're going to have to heal themselves from nature. Uh... It's going to be rough with a capital R, all right? And right now, it's already starting to happen. As Christians, it's already like, man, we've got to start pulling out of the system. You know, they're going to try to forcibly vaccinate us with flu shots and stuff like this. No, 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 you're not putting that poison in my body. Uh, they're going to, you know, economic collapse. They could take away your, you know, confiscate your bank account, the money that you're saving up for retirement or whatever. See, there's a transition in happening. And you see, the closer we get going from Florida to northern Maine, the closer we're getting, the colder the temperatures are getting. And you got to put more layers on and get warmer, become more vigilant. That's what's happening right now. So I uh, just wanted to put that thing together uh, real quickly, just to kind of bring up some interesting points. And, um, you know, a lot of people are just like, you know what, I don't care about the transition. I don't care about these things that you said there, brother, you know, and stuff. Uh, who cares? We're going to be leaving and then let the world handle it from there. Um, we listened to a sermon by Ruckman uh, that he preached a number of years ago. It's an older, you know, it was a newer sermon, you know, compared to some of the stuff he um, has preached. And it was how God, or no, excuse me, how Christians help the devil. And... And he talked about how a lot of Christians are helping the Antichrist system to come in by the way they live their lives. And he said, you know, well, that'll help us get out of here quicker. No, it won't. You're going to answer the judgment seat of Christ for that stuff. You know, Jesus Christ said, the offenses must needs come, but woe to the man by whom the offense cometh. You better be careful 
what you're going along with as a Christian. You better be careful what you are doing because you're going to leave a testimony behind. We're going to leave a testimony behind. And you know, I want somebody to be able to come here and say, hey, these people were different. Yeah, the church building right across over here that had the rock concert, they're still here. They're still there. Uh, Steven Anderson is still there. Ken Hovind's still there. All these other people are still there. And they're telling us, it's just believe, just believe. Walk around, believe, believe, believe. <laughs> you know? But these people left. They were different than those other ones. They didn't go to these church buildings. They believed those King James Bibles. They were into natural health. They weren't drowning in debt. They were different. They didn't have insurance. They, you know, kept their kindred separate. There was something different about those people. And not kindred separate because we're racists and we hate other people of other kindreds. That isn't it. We love people of other kindreds and we want them to preserve that unique characteristic that they have from God. Don't blend it with me. I'm not going to blend with you. Preserve the distinctions. That's what it's about. All right? And again, I've done studies on it. We're not going to go off on that. We need to be different. And the transition, as it's happening, we need to become pull more and more out of this world until the Lord pulls us out. Like that. So, I think that's going to be enough for now. Uh, it's, it's really kind of weird to do sermons for this time because it's like, uh, you know, I just want to be able to, to preach the Word and go through expository studies and things like that, but it's just like the hour is so late. I mean, it's, it is incredible that we're still even here. And the reason that we're still here is because I believe firmly that there are people that still need to be saved but I, I also believe that the transition um, has to happen on a stronger level. Uh, it isn't going to be just like church age, bam, time to take up trouble. The transition is happening. And there are certain things that we're not going to go into a transition time where you can lose your salvation. We're not going to go into a transition time where um, we're going to start to have signs and wonders and things like this in terms of miraculous things, you know. You know what I'm saying. We're not going to see the seals and the trumpets and the vials and stuff like that. Um, you know, people that are taking these implantable microchips right now, there's no Antichrist for them to be connected to, so they're not damned yet. Um, and we're not going to see the Antichrist, the body Christ leaves beforehand. But uh, things are getting weird. Things are getting weird very quickly. And so uh, I guess that's going to be it. <laughs> It's getting really late here. It's about 11.30 at night. But um, just stay strong, brethren. Please stay strong. Uh, don't get discouraged. I mean, there's there's so much wickedness right now in this world, and it's it's easy to to take your focus off of Jesus Christ and start looking at things and whatever else and get kind of frustrated and, and lose faith, you know, and start to be like, maybe the rapture's not going to happen, you know. Maybe we're going to go into the time, you know. Don't do that. We're in a transition time. Okay, the uh, Lord's given us precious promises in His Word. Over there, I keep looking over here because I'm used to it being over there. But uh, He's given us precious promises. You can you can uh, trust His promises. You can stand on those promises. So, do you have anything else to say? Well, not really. I mean, you already said it. Well, you were supposed to say. I said, do you have anything else to say? You could say else anything to say. else to say. See. See, if she would have done it at first without me saying it, then that would have been predictable. So she tries to be unpredictable with me, so I can't figure her out. I don't know what he's talking about. You, I am perfectly innocent. Uh-huh, sure, right. You know, you know. Accusations. Unfounded. Yes. Yes. Unjust. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, you know, we have this relationship because we've been through a lot together. And uh, we've both been through a lot of uh, very, very hard times before meeting each other and um you know i just want to encourage you out there if you're married and you're both saved um the book is between us okay um she's in submission to the book i'm in submission to the book that's the standard right there all right 
Keep that in the standard. Keep this in the center of your marriage. Keep this in the center of your life. If you're a young person, teenager going to high school, the book. If you're elderly, a widow, widower, the book. If you're married to a lost person, still the book. No matter where you are or what you're doing, stand by the Bible. Okay? So that is going to be it. We thank you very much for watching.